What is up, guys? Welcome back. I'm Kevin Kreitz. This is the channel where we go over to crypto news, followed by five charts every day. Today, we're looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, HBAR, LINK, and AXS. And as always, if you're just here for specific chart, timestamps are down in the description below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that bell on to catch notifications for all daily uploads. It's been a roller coaster ride of price action in the last 24 hours as the entire market glued to Bitcoin ranging in between a crucial support and resistance level on this attempted pump. And around 12 hours ago, we did see Bitcoin slightly peak above that resistance level, but then crash right back down to that support. Ethereum as well, slightly peaking above that 200 EMA that we talked about yesterday, but now back down to around $2,000 trading underneath the 200 EMA. And we see the entire altcoin market affected by these wild swings in Bitcoin's price action. A couple standout coins in the last 24 hours, AMP up around 14% today back on the gainers list and of no surprise Axie Infinity pushing past its all time highs in the last 12 hours into the $30 range and still hanging on to most of those price action gains up around 17% today. We're starting to notice a trend with these AXS pumps that whenever we see AXS pumping, we see sand, we see mana, we see flow, we see a lot of these NFT plays having a great pump the following 24 hours. And in my opinion, what's happening is that AXS is starting to dictate and raise the market cap for the NFT space. So even if you're not personally invested in AXS, I just wanted to point that out to you guys because AXS is starting to have a Bitcoin like effect on the entire NFT altcoin space. So if you feel that you've missed the boat on the AXS train, I just wanted to point that out so you guys understand that AXS is going to open up a lot of opportunities across the board for NFT related altcoins. But other than that, the market is looking decent today. However, it all depends on what happens with Bitcoin. Bitcoin has to stay above this price range of 32.1K. If it loses that support, we should see prices start trending back down lower. Looking at today's news, we have Ethereum making headlines to no surprise with the London hard fork just around the corner now. Will Ethereum become the deflationary asset of the decade? The article goes on to say the EIP-1559 update is further proof of this progress. It's reducing the volatility of transaction fees. It's empowering developers to make more sophisticated contracts. It's making the whole ecosystem run more efficiently. It's turning an inflationary asset into what could be one of the most sought after deflationary assets of this decade. And for those of you who aren't new here, you know I'm extremely bullish on the future of Ethereum, but it's going to be very interesting over the next couple of weeks watching to see how the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade affects the entire market. Because leading up to the test nets, we did see Ethereum not only pump, but pump up the entire market and outperform Bitcoin. But the question does stand as we approach the London hard fork, will Ethereum pump and pump up the entire market up with it again? And is price action only hanging on by a thread right now at the moment because of the expectations of Ethereum 2.0 on August 4th? Because it is important to keep in mind that leading up to a big event in terms of price action, sometimes that big event is already factored into the price. The test nets may have been a different story because the test nets were fractioned off into three separate dates. However, the Ethereum 2.0 upgrade does make Ethereum deflationary. So there is a bit of a question mark for me as to what's going to happen in the coming weeks. But we're going to be keeping a very close eye on Ethereum. If Ethereum can start to outperform Bitcoin again and carry up the market, that is when things could get very interesting. But for the time being, it looks like Ethereum is still pumping with Bitcoin. We had some Polkadot related news. Trading is now live on Karura Swap, the first decentralized exchange on Kusama and Polkadot. The Polkadot ecosystem has got its first decentralized exchange. Karura Swap, an automated market maker on Polkadot's Canary network, Kusama is now functional. The DEX was created by Akala, a DeFi project backed by Coinbase Ventures. Karura Swap is the first DEX to settle transactions via its own DEX specific parachain connected with Kusama's mainnet. And if you're not familiar with Karura, here's the website behind me. I'm extremely excited about this. This is the first decentralized exchange and DeFi platform for Polkadot and Kusama. That is so huge as far as price action goes. I think it's only a matter of time before we see a trend change for KSM and DOT. I will definitely be doing a deep dive into this in a future video, so make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn that bell on so you don't miss that. And we had Axie Infinity making a ton of headlines. As always, Axie Infinity refreshes record high as AXS ascends 131% in just three days, as well as this crypto has turned $1,000 into $27,000 in six months. A thousand dollar purchase of Axie Infinity six months ago would still be worth over $27,000 now. 
And that is so insane. And that is why we focus on NFT projects every time they're in the news here. Dpet, if you guys follow me on Twitter, is one I called out when it was around $2. Personally, been following it since around a dollar. I'm very bullish on this project. We're going to deep dive into it in a future video. So again, make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn that bell on so you don't miss those videos when they drop. Looking at Bitcoin's daily chart, let's turn our notes on from before and zoom in here. And you can see here, it's moving exactly how we talked about. See that trend line? It is putting so much downward pressure. Look at these long wicks. This last day or so should kind of indicate where prices are headed. We, there's a bit of space here to keep pushing, but there's not much space to keep pushing up. If it manages to break above 33.5, and I'll point out on the other chart later why, there may be a possibility. But if we zoom out here, let me move this over so you guys can see. See how high that stochastic RSI is now on the daily? That is not a good sign considering how low of a swing this is in price action. So let's just jump over to the Ichimoku chart for a sec. Looking at Bitcoin's daily Ichimoku chart, and if we zoom in here and turn our notes on, again, that stochastic RSI, you don't wanna see that. RSI, a bit of a sharp move here, but it is still in downtrend zone, and you can also kinda of see here a bit of resistance right there. If we jump to the four hour chart though, you can see a better story. Actually, let's turn the notes off and show you guys this as well. We talked about the baseline kinda of pushing pressure and pushing price down on the daily. We're seeing that here. It's having a lot of trouble breaking above this price range of around 33.9, let me bring that a little lower actually, 33.8 but at 33.9 would also be a very interesting resistance as far as the Kumo cloud goes. If we look at the four hour chart, it kind of tells you a better story of what has been happening. You can see here 32.8, 32.9, is a major resistance as far as price action goes. And it did wick above for a moment around 12 hours ago, but that did not last long. We saw prices come crashing back down pretty fast. It's trying to hold on to this support here, but this support range of around 31.9 was very crucial. But since price action has moved a little bit more to the right, it is possible for it to kind of hang on and even dropped around 30, 31.2 and make another push for around 32 and maybe get bullish from there. But overall, if we jump over to the one hour chart, you see a different story as well. On the one hour chart it is just hanging above the Kumo cloud. And that is not what you wanna see. So as far as price action goes, it's very crucial that Bitcoin hangs on to the support on the hourly of around 32.1. And you can see it's trying to with this reversal candle, a bit of upward pressure on these wicks. So it's not a total blowout in terms of price action. Stochastic RSI is also very low on the hourly, so it could push up in price. It's gonna run into heavy resistance around 32.3. 32.1 is going to be crucial though, because if this starts to dip into the cloud and if we jump over to the four hour chart, 32.1 will kind of push it below this support that it's been hanging on to. And below that really 31.9 was a crucial support. It's got a bit of room to go a little bit lower now, but overall you can see it kind of got capped out by the top of this Kumo cloud. And if we jump back to the daily and we turn all these notes off, so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Whoops, let me just turn that back on and move this over. If we turn these notes off, you can see here this price range of around 32.9, very crucial resistance that it is having trouble breaking right around the baseline. And above that would be 33.7. Let me turn these notes on. So it's, yeah, 33.7. So as far as that goes, we talked about the Kumo cloud. And for those of you who are new here, Bitcoin has not challenged the Kumo cloud since pretty much the May 19th crash. It has tried a couple times here when prices pushed around 41K on June 14th, but every time it's failed, prices have crashed down in the following days intensely, hitting around 28K the first time it did challenge the Kumo cloud. And again, recently trying for a slight challenge, not even really getting up that close. And then prices came down to the mid 20s again. And if we see here, if it manages to get above the baseline and even challenge around 33.7, that would be the most bullish thing we have seen out of Bitcoin since the May 19th crash, a legitimate challenge of the Kumo cloud. But with the stochastic RSI being so high, that may not happen. Don't get me wrong, it could consolidate in this range over the next few days, kind of just trade up and down in this area here and then make a push for it. That would be very unexpected and very bullish because if we jump over to the weekly chart, and let's turn the notes off so it's easy for everyone to see. And if you're new here, we've been talking about this for a while. This price target of around 27.9, in my opinion, would be the bottom of this potential dip for the time being, where we may see a spring after that. You're already seeing a lot of these long wicks, so price is trying to push up. But with this conversion line coming down, that's kind of lowering where this could spring to. And at the moment, that's kind of reaching around 35K, and that might get lowered a bit more as we approach the Kumo cloud. But in my opinion, it's really only a matter of time before Bitcoin gets pressed into the Kumo cloud. And potentially Eventually drops down to this price target of around 22k that doesn't mean that it can't bounce up sometimes when we see price action ap approach the kumo cloud we do see a nice spring and then things could get bullish again from there so that is 
always a possibility. But as far as price action goes, I'm not sure what would be driving price up since we've only really been seeing price drop for the last few months consistently. So in my opinion, it really is Ethereum at the moment that is keeping the market somewhat stable. And if that Ethereum hard fork happens and we don't see a jump in price, I expect prices may trend back down lower. So as far as price targets go, I'm still watching the low 30Ks to 28K for Bitcoin, but if it can manage on the daily to get back to these price ranges, if it can get managed to get above 33.7, that would be a very interesting resistance for Bitcoin to conquer. But for the time being, my price targets are still low, still looking for around 28K for Bitcoin. Looking at Ethereum's daily chart, before we even turn our notes on here, there's a few things to point out. It is above the 200 EMA, but if you zoom in nice and close, you can see this downward pressure on this daily candle, as well as this one is a bit of a wick here. It kind of depends on if this candle closes like this, I would expect prices to go back down lower. Not to mention stochastic RSI sky high on the daily, sky high on the four hour. It is low on the one hour, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be able to pump up in price. Maybe over the next hour or so, we see a bit of a pump before we see prices start to trend back down lower. And if we go back to the daily, turn our notes on from before, we see price action pretty much moved after the test net exactly how we assumed. My only concern with the test net is that the test nets were fractioned off into three dates. And with the London hard fork being one specific date that may already be factored into the price. So the question is how much will the London hard forks deflationary factor for Ethereum kick in with price action right away? Or can we expect to see prices trend back down lower pretty much immediately after August 4th? So in terms of price targets, I'm still looking out for this low 1700, but if, if it starts to get there before Bitcoin really goes for that dip into the mid twenties, then this 1500 price target is possible. This low 1700 does seem to be holding very strong. We do see some good bounces there, this strong candle here. We can see prices are getting walked down lower. And if I turn off all the notes, you can see a pretty clear downtrend, just like you see with Bitcoin, but let's just jump over to the Ichimoku chart. Looking at Ethereum's daily Ichimoku chart, and if we before we even turn our notes on, if we zoom in here, you can see that it's getting pressed down hard by the baseline, just like Bitcoin. And I honestly don't expect price action to trend too much higher than that. Maybe come back down lower, but if it does challenge this target here of around 2150, that would be a very interesting resistance level for Ethereum, just like Bitcoin. Next to the Kumo cloud, if it manages to get above there, challenge the Kumo cloud legitimately for the first time since the May 19th crash, that would be a huge change in trend. We have not seen Bitcoin or Ethereum do that in months. However, I'm not expecting that to happen. I think prices should trend back down lower to the 1700s, but if it gets above 2150, then the story has changed. But in my opinion, my price targets for the time being are still around the low 1700s. And if it reaches that area before Bitcoin starts to dip much lower, I kind of watch out for this 1500 range. But for the time being, price target for Ethereum 1700 resistance to conquer will be around 2150. Looking at HBAR's daily chart, let's turn our notes on here. And I just want to talk about the fact that HBAR, although it is below the 200 EMA, it, the price action has moved in a very interesting way. I would have expected HBAR to have dropped much lower after the May 19th crash. You have to think about something like VeChain. VeChain has taken a beating after the May 19th crash, but HBAR, although it did drop from some of these highs of around 40 to 44 cents, it still managed to keep quite a bit of its price action gains. Staying in between the support level around 14 to 19 cents, it is going to be interesting over the following weeks to see if Bitcoin does go lower, could HBAR drop any lower than 14 cents? Somewhere around 10 cents would be the lowest I could see HBAR getting to. And I, I don't expect it to stay down there long because of how well it's held on to some of these gains here. You have to keep in mind, HBAR was just back in January, two cents. And for it to still be staying around 20 cents is a very decent jump in price, especially considering the state of the market. But let's just jump over to the Ichimoku chart. Looking at HBAR's daily Ichimoku chart, it is interesting if we zoom in here, it is attempting to challenge the Kumo cloud unsuccessfully though, considering the state of the market, but the Kumo cloud is not very thick. There's not a lot of resistance in the way of HBAR. If you turn our notes on from before, this level here of around 17 to 18 cents is gonna be a major resistance level at this point for HBAR. I would be surprised to even see it challenge it at this point, considering the state of the market. I don't think HBAR is in a position to move autonomously from Bitcoin. It may be eventually, but for the time being, I would be very surprised to see it challenge this price target of around 18 cents. As far as price targets go for HBAR, I keep my eye on this 15 cent range. Uh, I'd be surprised to see it drop to 10 cents. I would not expect it to spend too much time there. The size of this cloud is not very thick. There's not a lot of resistance in the way of HBAR. You can see even here, it's attempting to start to twist together, but overall, 
I don't think HBAR is going to drop that low. As far as price targets, I think maybe 15 cents or a little bit lower, somewhere around this week, around 14 cents is possible. But as far as price targets, I'd watch for resistance around 18 cents would be very interesting. But price targets, I keep my eye on around 15 to 14 to 10 cents for HBAR. Looking at Chainlink's daily chart, it's our notes on from the last time we talked about this, and you can see here it pretty much came exactly down to the price targets we've talked about, around this $15 to $13 range. Currently, it's trading on the high end of that range, so that kind of does give me some indication considering stochastic RSI over here is pretty high. So as Bitcoin starts to trend back down lower, I would expect Chainlink to kind of hit, hit that price target of around $14 again. But if Bitcoin does go sub 30 k I would not be too surprised to see Chainlink dip down to this $9 to $10 range. This is not the most bullish looking chart anymore. It's way below the 200 EMA. Stochastic RSI is sky high. RSI is nowhere near uptrend zone here. So as far as price targets, I start to keep my eye out somewhere between that $10 to $14 for Chainlink. Let's just jump over to the Ichimoku chart. Looking at Chainlink's daily Ichimoku chart, so our notes on from the last time we talked about Chainlink. You can see here price targets pretty much hit of around, I'd say at around $13 to $14 it did land on, a bit of a bounce. But the reason I keep my eye on these lower price targets for Link is because if we jump over to the four hour chart, you can see it's pretty much moving identical to Bitcoin. Came into the uh, Kumo cloud on the four hour chart, didn't even quite make it to the top and it started to trend back down in price probably land on this price target soon if Bitcoin starts to dip lower of around 14.9. If 14.9 is tested, I would not be too surprised to see Chainlink head back down towards this price range of around 13 to ten dollars i mean ten dollars on the low end again if bitcoin goes sub 30k but if we look at price targets here if chain link can get managed to get above around 16 7 16 8 let's say around 17 dollars really that would be a bullish scenario for chain link that's going to be chain link's major resistance for the time being we can even walk it down a bit now the price has dropped really chain link needs to get above 16 dollars build support and push up there I would be surprised to see that happen. However, it all depends on what happens with Bitcoin. Again, this is an identical chart to Bitcoin. In fact, just looking a little bit weaker. So it all depends on what happens with Bitcoin over the next 24, 48 hours. If prices dip lower, I'd start to look out for these price targets of around $13, $14. And if prices dip to that range before Bitcoin goes below 30K, I'd start to watch out for a price target of around $10 for Chainlink. So as far as Chainlink price targets, I'm looking around $14 to $13. And on the very lowest end, I keep my eye out for around $10 to $9. Looking at AXS's daily chart, so our notes on from last time we talked about this. We've been talking about AXS every single day. And did we nail that springing point or what, guys? If you go back in previous videos and take a look, we talked about that price range being an area where AXS might take a leap off. And to be honest, it blew past my own expectations for how high AXS can go. But we talk about it every day. It is still such a bullish looking chart. Take a look at this RSI sky high. Even the Bollinger Band says to go long. Stochastic RSI is low and still has room to pump. Let's jump over to the Ichimoku chart chart. Looking at AXS's daily Ichimoku chart, such a bullish looking chart. Look at these three big green candles. We talked about this setup yesterday, getting back above the conversion line, how bullish that was. And if we jump over to the four hour chart, we did talk about this price range here that once it got above $25, if it built support, it would almost most definitely push for its all time highs. And to no surprise, it did. As far as price targets go now, I'd expect there to be a bit of a pullback, but even these candles here, I don't see too much downward pressure, except for maybe on this one. It's Still trying to push up in price. AXS could keep going, but see the stochastic RSI is pretty high. It might dip low, push back up in price. It is possible that this keeps on pushing, but as far as a pullback range, I would start watching this range of around $27 for the be the first target for a heavy pullback as far as AXS price action goes. And from there, I would keep my eye on around $23. I don't expect it to go much lower than that. Somewhere around here is possible too, around $21. Again, $21 is going to be the most crucial support for AXS to maintain a bullish push. If it manages to hold above 27 and strongly get back to board 29, it is possible that AXS could keep pushing. But as far as price targets go, you're going to want to watch these pullback prices at this point. So around 27, 23 and 21 dollars being the most crucial point. But as far as price action goes, if we jump back to the daily turn our notes off, this is still a very bullish looking chart. I'd expect prices to pull back a bit. So that price range of around $21 has to hold. But as far as price action goes, I think AXS could still keep going. But as far as price targets, I kind of keep my eye on those price targets we just talked about. 27 being the first one, 23 being the second one, and 21 being the crucial support for AXS to hold on this pump. 
All right, folks, that's all for today. If there's any charts you want me to look at in the future, leave it down in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and turn that bell on to get notifications for all daily videos. If you're not following me on Twitter, Kevin Crates underscore on Twitter. I'm extremely active on there. Anytime you tweet at me, I will always tweet back at you. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'm out.